Well, good evening. It was just a week ago that I joined the Global Brigade. Uh, these are college kids and medical students who go down to Honduras. And there we take care of people. Uh, they line up, uh, they see, these people would see a physician maybe once every six months to a year. And then the students and I and the patients would interact with each other. It's the ultimate high touch experience uh, down to the basic core values of primary care. When I look at that picture, that's what I think medicine should be practiced at, intimate, caring people. How do we maintain that in an era where we're going to have cost restraints? At Mayo Clinic, we're talking about cutting our cost 15% in the next three years. We are no longer going to be able to accept money at the same rate that we've been able to do in the past. Whether healthcare reform occurs or not, with the population aging, and with our patients becoming more and more Medicare patients, less and less baby boomers who have full insurance, the pressures on each individual group is going to be high. How can we maintain high quality and yet decrease costs? Well, today what we're going to do is talk about the digital world and using that to help us so that we'll be able to address these issues. As we go forward, these are some of the concerns that we would have about digital uh, methods or using e-business. Uh, it's going to take a tremendous amount of time. It's impersonal. People won't use it right. I might get sued. It's not secured. And by the way, I'm going to lose a lot of money. Those are the kind of concerns clinicians provide when we talk about e-business. At the end of this visit, each one of these concerns you'll realize is not true. Matter of fact, the future of healthcare is going to lie in us being able to use the digital environment to be able to help our patients. As we look at a change curve, uh, you can sort of see where you are. I, I kind of like this curve because it kind of tells people where they are. Uh, satisfaction, I'm happy as I am. Well, nobody's there right now. Denial, this isn't relevant to, to my work. Well, there are some of us today that were in that stage resistance. I'm not having this. I've certainly heard some of this exploration. Could this work for me? Hope. I can see how I might make this work for me and I'm commitment. I can see how this would work for me and my colleagues. Hopefully after my presentation, you'll have gone further to the right uh, with, my, uh, with your feelings. When you talk about online business, there's three basic mechanisms that we have to deal with. The first is you have to have an infrastructure, a computerized system. The second thing is you need to develop your processes. The third, you have to change your culture. And then fourth, uh, you should have a financial model so that you end up making money. Um, at this point, I was going to show you a patient, but because of this being on the internet and being taped, I decided that that's not appropriate, so I'll mimic the patient. Uh, this is a picture of a patient in the hospital, and she's huffing and puffing. <laughs> and I'm asking her questions, and the questions I ask her, well, what happened? And this is what she said. Well, a few days ago, I called the nurse, and she's... I wanted to talk to my doctor because I knew that if I got some antibiotics, that would help me. And so what I did is I called and they said I was too sick and I should come in. But you see, I can't come in because I'm crippled and I have this wheelchair and I just couldn't come in. So I waited and then I came into the emergency room and they put me in the hospital. And then I asked the patient, gee, uh, do you do anything uh, on the internet? Do you do, uh, for example, online banking? <laughs> yes. I do online banking. And then I said to her, gee, if you had a way of communicating with your physician online, do you think that the physician would have known what to do? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. And then I said, would you be interested in participating in something where you could contact your physician online? And she said, yes, and you can use this video to show anyone that she smiles. How often do you think that happens in your practice? Patients that are intimidated by calling in, so that by the time they seek care, it's been a few days. You'd be surprised how many obstacles there are. You know, I thought I should be in contact my physician, but this morning I'm feeling a little bit better. In fact, I'm just getting better. I think it happens a fair amount. One of the things about going digital is your access for your patients will be better. Well, who will use it? These are just, everyone will be able to use it. In, in your, uh, your area, uh, the vast majority of your patients will be able to use this. You already have uh, 
my chart up, and you're just beginning to find the wonderful advantages that this is going to be. Uh, this can change your practice. Uh, initially, most clinicians, when they start, they say, what in the world is this going to do? But after a year, once you've learned how to use it so that the patients are looking up their lab results and contacting you with messages and, th and such uh, things as this, you'll find how much more efficient you will be. You'll actually be able to be more effective once you get my chart going. As you can see from this graph, most demographic groups work really well. If you take a look at our Latinos, in our group, we were surprised that the maids in hotels are Hispanic, and they would get three or four of them together, and they do an online visit together, just so that they could avoid a visit. You will not be surprised, but I am willing to bet that your patients are willing to pay you money so they don't come into the office to see you. Uh, you have, as I said, my chart with all these services to help provide you so that patients can decide to make an appointment uh, when they want to and then get a re response back when they can pay their bill or when they can look up their laboratory results. But what we're going to do is primarily talk about online visits. Online visits are done in all sorts of places. Here's a lineup. They're using my chart just like you. They have about, um, uh, I think it's like 35,000 people online. Here's Henry Ford. Henry Ford has a oh, over 100,000 people online. And just uh, as another group, this is the poorest county in North Carolina. Karen Smith has had an online presence for several years. And this poorest county has online consultations and the ability to look up lab results uh, comparable to the Mayo Clinic. When you have two kinds of portals, the first is the kind that you have, my chart. You have it as a part of your electronic medical record, and then all the information goes into the online uh, online area for the patient to view. You can also have a portal that's separate, and that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about MedFusion, and that's what we use at the medical clinic. If you try to look at the literature and find something about this, you're not going to find much. There's a lot of talk, not much volume, and certainly not much money made. At Mayo, what we decided to do as a department is that we got tired of waiting for us to develop a portal. They've been in, trying to do this for years, and uh, our group decided that we were going to develop our own portal. Um, we have an electronic medical record. It's not as good as yours. Uh, Epic is a very good EMR. Our EMR is basically paper under glass. Uh, all we do is have our documents put into it. There's a lot of dictation. Uh, it's not an integrated EMR uh, such as Epic. Um, let's uh, see what kind of things happen to us. The first thing is when we set up this pilot, we had a committee, and we called this committee the Short Leash Committee. Every time we tried to do something, they would pull on the leash to make sure we wouldn't go too far out. The purpose of the pilot was to find out as much about e-visits as possible. They gave us three years to do it, or until our mail portal was completely developed. We had some restrictions in that patients had to come in and sign up for it in the office. So a nurse, right now, in your group would be able to say, hello, Mrs. Jones. Oh, you're having a urinary tract infection. I'd like you to sign up the portal. You could do that. We could not. That's going to be a distinct advantage. The other thing is we could not sign up people outside of state. Even though we might have a relationship with you, we would not sign you up unless you were living in the state of Minnesota. So the patient who lives, uh, who works two uh, floors up, and I've delivered a couple of her kids, and lives in Iowa, could not do e-business. The vendor we chose is MedFusion. Why did we choose this? The American Academy of Family Practice recommended it. Mysis is an EMR that was using it as a vendor, so we thought they had a good reputation. 